Christmas blossom don't cry without any sun. Lotus blossom don't cry without any sun. Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. This is going to be a review for you guys. Today we have a classic, and it is Koros from Yves Saint Laurent. This is the seventh fragrance that I own from this house. I also own Live Jazz, Reeve Gauche, M7, La Nuit de Lome, Lome, Body Koros, and this guy. Um, I would like Vintage Opium Pour Homme. Uh, I would like to get Noble Leather from the Oriental Collection, and I would like to check out some of their private exclusive releases as well. I haven't really checked any of those out. Um, I'd like to. If you want some backstory on Yves Saint Laurent, now just called Saint Laurent uh, in the fashion game, please check out the review that I did on Loam a few years back. I also have a more recent review of M7 on my channel, The Vintage Formulation. This fragrance, Koros, was released in 1981, and the perfumer behind this one is Pierre Bourdon. Um, you might know him as the nose behind Cool Water by Davidoff, our French Lover and Iris Poudre by Frederick Maul, Individual by Mont Blanc, and he also did live jazz for YSL, which I will review down the line. Note-wise on this one, we get aldehydes, artemisia, coriander, clary sage, and bergamot at the top, carnation, patchouli, cinnamon, orris root, jasmine, vetiver, and geranium in the middle, honey, leather, tonka, amber, musk, civet, and oak moss in the base. Now I grabbed this one off Amazon for 40 bucks, and that's what you can expect to pay for this one. 100 ml EDT is gonna be somewhere in the $40 range. I think there's a 50 ml bottle as well. You know, Maybe that'll be in the, the $30 range. The bottle is um, metal, it's all white, um, there's a sticker on the bottom, it's a little toilette as you can see, little marking on mine, the cap has YSL, really good sprayer, so you know, just uh, definitely different, really really heavy, super durable, as I said it does feel like it's metal, nice presentation. And as far as the fragrance goes, this is absolutely one of my favorite designer scents of all time, but uh, it's not for the faint of heart. At the top you get these very animalic musks right away. And there's a material made by a company called Cinerome, which is a fragrance company um, called Animalis 1745. And I don't know if that was around in 1981 or if it's what Bourdon used to create Koros, but if it's not, um, Cinerome captured the animalic musk feel in Koros and reproduced that accord uh, in, in their base perfectly. So you get this, this, these animalic musks, and then you get this like honey smeared leather with oak moss and patchouli. It's sturdy, it's manly, it's mature. Uh, it really harkens back to that like gold chain and, and silk shirt era, but it does it with class. It's not like a cheap imitation, it's like a father of that era. Uh, so you're gonna get this big animalic accord. Remember, you're gonna get rich, thick, warm honey, skanky leather and patchouli and it's going to be glorious. Now as this one dries down it becomes a little bit more tamed but not too much. It just softens up a little bit, uh, starts to dry down letting you get a peek at some vanilla, uh, maybe a little bit of orris, cinnamon, carnation, spicy florals, but that really heavy animalic accord is always front and center. Now it's funny though because I don't smell any civet and this scent has been compared to you know, a Savette Dream, it's been compared to a gay man's underwear, it's been compared to f shit, it's, oh, many people says it smells like urinal cakes, to me it doesn't smell like any of those things. Now I don't know what a gay man's underwear smells like, I kind of guess it would smell like what most guys' underwear smells like, I think. <clears throat> Uh, performance on this one is great. It's just great. It projects, it has huge sillage, and it lasts for hours. This is beastly and big. You know, I wore this to work because I was testing it the other day, and I, I did go like, you know, five sprays, and uh, I came into the office, and I had a meeting 
with my team in my office in the morning and people came in, they were just like, ooh, what is that? So it was embarrassing. Um, so I would really, two sprays of this one from a couple feet away at best is the way to do this one. Restraint is the key word here. Um, could this be unisex? Look, anything could be unisex and I would love to hang out with the chick rocking this one. But uh, I think this is probably, you know, made with a, with a, a man in mind. Uh, and ideally, uh, I would think this is one you want to wear with restraint on a date with the right woman or a night out with the right, right people, well-dressed, um, and uh, again, with restraint in cold weather. If you're looking for something similar, um, you know, Arquiste made a fragrance called Elf that kind of smells like an updated niche version of this fragrance. It's a little bit smoother, a little bit more rounded, perhaps better materials were used. Um, Figment Man by Amouage gets some comparisons to this one. Um, some people think that Animal 1745 is in Figment Man as well. Uh, but if you like this, I think the scents you're gonna really uh, gravitate to are scents like Musk Tonkin by Parfum the Empire, Musk de Kubla Khan by Serge Latam, Beaver by Zoologist, really ballsy animalic fragrances. If someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this, I think they'd say, yeah, you're, you're getting a, a ballsy scent. You know, $40 is a good price for a classic fragrance. Um, this is uh, groundbreaking. This has some historical significance in that um, it was a really popular early 80s fragrance. Um, and so it's it stood the last of time. You're getting a, a fragrance that has in, you know, endured you know, almost 30 years. If someone were trying to talk you into skipping this, you know, they might say it's it's too much sauce for some people. You know, this one is just maybe a little bit too much for people who like fresh fragrances, aquatic fragrances, or, or really um, not into animalic fragrances. And it might be hard for some people, or most people, to be honest with you, to find the right occasion for this one. Um, I love this fragrance, if you can't already tell. I think it's just great, and I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Um, I think the price is great now, $40, you, you can't beat it. It's got an interesting presentation. Um, it's very different from a lot of other fragrances that are out there. I love the animalic facets to this scent. I think it's well made. Um, I just think it's well constructed, it's blended well, and it's very nuanced. There's just a bunch of little notes you pick up through the development. You know, the, the big notes and accords are definitely out there in the forefront, but there's there's more to it as well. And it's fun wearing this one and just picking up different things as you wear it. So I'm a big Koros fan, as, as you can already tell. Nine out of 10 is a, is a good score for me. And of course, this one performs like a champ. So that's it guys, that's my review of Koros. I wanna wish you and your families a very, very happy holidays, no matter what you celebrate. If it is Christmas, hey, you know, enjoy it. And happy Christmas uh, Eve. I will see you guys next week with more videos, of course. You know, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I, of course, always appreciate it. Thank you for making this a great year. My name is Max. Relax on the sun. Low as possible. Relax on the sun.